Hi, Vinny. My name is Mark. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Captive IQ, and we are the new standard in commission management. Um, as some background, I've been in finance, or as a background, I'm a co-CEO and co-founder of the company. I you know, spend more time looking over the sales and marketing uh, and GNA side of the house. Uh, my other co-founder and co-CEO spends more time on product and services, and then Hubert Wong spends more time on, on um uh, all things engineering and happy to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing at Captivate IQ today. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. And so, you know, for today, I brought uh, a couple of slides just to kind of give you a little bit more of an overview of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and, you know, feel free to let me know if there's any questions that come up, but to kick things off, um, you know, I think uh, kind of tell a little talk about the origin story of Captivate IQ is probably a good uh, starting place. Uh, and the genesis of Captive AQ started uh, actually well before we started the company uh, over four years ago. Uh, it started when I was uh, at a company called Brightroll, and I was one of the first finance hires uh, to come in to work under a new CFO. And uh, one of the first responsibilities they gave me was you need to rebuild our commissions model because we switched ERPs and we have a new commission plan that we just rolled out at the beginning of the year. As a former investment banker, I thought that was easy enough. Um, you know, putting something together in Excel should be pretty quick to our exercise. But to my surprise, I spent the next two weeks wrestling with this responsibility, grabbing the data from our different data systems, massaging it, truing up uh, with all the manual overrides, splitting deals, building a new commissions model in Excel, and then sending out statements to people. Uh, I remember our VP of sales joked uh, when he looked at me and said, like, it looked like I got hit by a bus from all the stress. Uh, and late nights I was working on. And it was true. Uh, it was a very, I was surprised by how much stress coming from even the world of investment banking, where, you know, you're building models for these M&As, uh, very similar amount of, you know, uh, accuracy needs to go into commissions because these are people's payouts. So um, after I got through that first hurdle of an exercise, I thought to myself, there should be an easier way to do this. I looked at solutions in the space, um, in particular, two of the leading solutions that people consider in the market, one of them did not pick our call up. Um, and for right reasons, uh, you know, I learned later on that they only focus in on like the Fortune 250 of the world. Uh, the other one did, but they said that they could only handle the last part of our process, which is we can make it easy to send statements out to people. Our commission plans are too complicated for what they would have, so they would recommend simplifying it. And then the data stuff they wouldn't touch with. It felt like for as costly as what they're proposing, it didn't make sense for us to move forward. So I continued to do it in spreadsheets. And as time went on, I just, it got to that point where I kept thinking I wanted to quit my job over this one responsibility because it just was that painful. So uh, I later caught up with uh, some friends from college and I learned that they had a similar pain point uh, in managing commissions, particularly at leading companies like Gusto. And uh, one thing led to another. We quit our jobs and brought in our other college friend, Hubert Wong, to start building a new approach to commissions. Uh, and the idea was to build something that we would have used in our old roles. So now fast forward, uh, we are the leading platform for sales commissions. Uh, we have um, one of the top spots are, uh, for both G2 and Capterra, and we're well uh, cited and well reviewed. Um, we've grown over three times in ARR every year for the past couple of years, um, as well as on our customer base. Uh, we've raised about 165 million in capital, um, and most recently a hundred million dollar raise at a 1.25 billion valuation, uh, with leading investors like Iconic, Sequoia, Excel, uh, and Sapphire. And uh, we just continue to grow. Today we have over 250 employees. Um, we're now operating in about 11 different time zones, seven countries, uh, and our team's just quadrupled, uh, since the beginning of 2020. So, uh, a lot of progress and a lot of growth from what we're seeing. So Mark, what's your sweet spot in terms of customer base? Like later you said, you probably not the fortune 250, still the startup world, but what would you say is your sweet spot? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think the best way to take, to unpack it is, you know, our, it's, I think our broader ambition is to continue to serve a broad gamut. Um, today, we serve about anywhere from, uh, call it 25 employee base of about 60 to 100, going up to about 5,000. Uh, with that being said, 
as we continue to release more and more product, uh, and our engineering teams have been uh, has quadrupled in size over the last 18 months, um, we're going to continue to push that upper barrier. So today it's where it starts, it might end at 5,000. You know, at six months, 12 months, that might be 10,000 or 15,000 employee bases. Uh, we're releasing a lot of functionality uh, every day around this stuff. Is it is it the size of the company or is it more the complexity of the comp plan that is that limits whether people can use you or not? Great question. It's uh, it's definitely not the complexity of the comp plan. And one fun fact about us, there hasn't been a commission plan that we cannot go live with with regards to any scenario, like you know, handling unique draws, data structures, or commission plans. Uh, our whole belief is that at the end of the day, so long that there's logic and there's a repetitive process behind it, which is what software does really well, we should be able to help automate it. Um, what we what limits us over time is it's really a lot more around. Um, I call it like user access and controls. So when you get bigger, you now have massive bigger teams uh, wanting to manage a system and you want even more granular detailed permissions to allow them to do certain things within the software. So that's a big part of it. Um, frankly, another big part of it is once you get to 10,000, you know, up to 50,000 employee bases, even call it 100,000, um, you start to see really massive data sets. You know, your data volume could be in the billions of records a month. Um, and so for us, we do have a bit of ways to go to handle, call it the billions of records a month. Um, even though today uh, there are clients that are handling or producing millions of records a month, which is no problem. So, but great questions. Um, so, you know, I think uh, with that being said, uh, you know, a lot of growth that we're seeing at the company and, you know, we're very proud of the, of the progress that we're seeing. So now, um, you know, our company's, I mean, our growth uh, shouldn't be all at all surprising. Um, you know, one of the things that has been very clear is that sales commissions is really important because people like to be motivated by the financial rewards of their success and hard work. Problem is, is commissions is really, really difficult, uh, especially speaking at firsthand. It's easy to screw it up. It can wreck your business if you calculate things incorrectly or you misforecast how you think about uh, commissions. Uh, it's one of the largest PL line items. You know, typically it makes up 10% of revenue. Uh, but what's crazy from what we found out is 80% of commissions have errors in them. And so with this, uh, you know, we believe there's a, a need to have an automated commissions process to help streamline a lot of the manual work that you typically see within commissions. So with that said, today, you know, one of the key questions people ask is like, well, how do people handle this complex process? Uh, we think uh, today the world looks like this. You have two types of suboptimal choices. One is you know, approaching it from manual, opaque, and error-prone spreadsheets. Uh, or the other is you know, going after or using rigid and costly legacy solutions. 70% uh, of the market use spreadsheets for a good reason. Um, you know, it's low cost, super flexible, and it's something that people already know how to use. Unfortunately, it's very error prone um, and it doesn't scale uh, with, a, you know, it requires a lot of manual, uh, manual uh, processes in order to get from beginning to end. On the other side of the market, when you have pure play commission solutions, these solutions, again, are really expensive. You often have to use very expensive pro server SIs to help implement them. Uh, they require a lot of upfront learning to know how to learn the nuances of the system. And they're just very, very difficult to use. Um, and oftentimes you might not even be able to handle your modern commission plan. You might have to do workarounds in order to accommodate what you wanna have built. So why do companies choose uh, Captive IQ? You know, we think it comes to uh, a couple of core reasons that are really important. Uh, in terms of our value prop to customers, we see them, uh, we see people uh, emphasize two really important things that has translated in how we've built the product. Um, we think uh, the success to this market really hinges on having unparalleled flexibility with regards to commission plans. And the second is the ease of use to be able to set up 
those commission plans. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we've broken down uh, our value prop around these four different key aspects. One, uh, having a flexible calculation engine that can handle any commission plan. And so one of the unique things that uh, we've appreciated and learned is that commission plans, when you first set it up, that might not be the last time you set it up. You might have to change the commission plan six months later, 12 months later, you might do it like every year. And so having a flexible tool that you can use so that you can, when, if you do change your commission plans, you can still use that system to automate your processes is paramount. It's really important to have an easy to use uh, system that removes the need for outside consultants. We all know like nothing's more frustrating than having this game of telephone between you and the system integrator and making sure you, what you communicate is how you, they're gonna interpret it. And then you have to do all the uh, added UAT. If you can do this yourself, not only is it faster and you feel it'd be more accurate and you have a higher confidence level, it also lowers the inherent cost uh, and total cost of ownership. Uh, automated workflows is paramount, you know, especially coming from the world of spreadsheets, you want a, a source of truth to be able to eliminate errors and be able to reduce a lot of the, the manual uh, inputs. And then lastly, and this is probably one of the most important aspects of our platform, we offer a data or an off the shelf data transformation layer. Um, the idea here is that we provide a no-code uh, GUI interface for you to do really powerful transformations with regards to the data set. And uh, we can uh, do uh, really simple things like, uh, you know, maybe add a column and you could do a, a flag, like if this behavior is true, uh, I'll put this, or you could do really powerful, uh, but easy things like joining two different data sets together. So another example would be maybe you have your CRM data and then you have your ERP data. Um, oftentimes for the commission plans, you might wanna combine those or you might wanna combine it just for um, analytical views. You can do that with our system through two clicks. And to us, that's one of the more powerful things that um, we believe has continued to differentiate us in the market and has led to us to being uh, a top player, but also a big replacement solution for existing manual processes, as well as for legacy solutions. Uh, switching into talking a little about our customers, you know, we've partnered with hundreds of leading companies to save them uh, days each month on running their commissions process. Um, you know, we work commonly with hyper growth companies. So if you can see from some of the companies here, Hopin, Data Robot, Podium, Gong. <coughs> A lot of them are looking for the same thing. They want to automate this process, but they're looking for something that's very flexible and easy to use for them to, to pick up and managing this kind of complicated um, uh, function. Uh, of note, uh, of the companies around here, 25% um, of them are in the cloud 100. So that's a really uh, important achievement from our perspective, uh, especially given our um, uh, you know, how long we've been around for and being able to acquire really great companies like that. Um, but two other things that are important to call it here is not everyone comes from spreadsheets or, uh, or vice versa. We just see a mix across the board. Um, you know, those that come from spreadsheets, again, they were looking for automation, clear statements, system of record, and, you know, being able to audit the data. And those coming from other vendors, uh, they were looking for more of a flexible commission solution, something that was no code versus having heavy code backends, um, and then more of an off-the-shelf data transformation layer that allowed them to do much more than they could with more of these rigid systems. Kind of bringing it to the last uh, part of what I wanted to, to hit on, um, you know, one thing that gets us really excited is, is where we think we're going or where we're where we're going in the future. Um, you know, we talk to CFOs and sales leaders all the time um, and ask them about, you know, how, you know, what pain points are they seeing in their uh, process? And a lot of them are asking us the same questions. Look, um, how do we set the right quotas? What are the right commission plans that we should be thinking about? Um, you know, how can we get better at forecasting uh, the impact both on the top line and bottom line around this stuff? And so, you know, because we process thousands of commission plans every day, we have, we believe we have the data and insights to be more intelligent about how they plan and optimize their sales incentives. So uh, what we'd like to solve next as part of our journey is what are the right plans and quotas and incentives for you to be thinking about with regards to your uh, incentive management. So 
Pause there. Any any questions that I can help uh, dive a little so, bit deeper on? So clearly, the industry is not becoming any simpler, right? Contracts are becoming more complex. CPQ is not just about product; it's about services and SLAs keep getting more and more complex. How are you know? Are people focusing more on margin and product? Are they looking at? Tell me how as contracts become more complex, sales commissions are getting more complex. Yeah. So I think the one thing that um, I have seen personally more is that back in the day, it used to be, what are other people doing and let's copy them. Like let's, who is the, the bellwether in our, in our industry? Let's take that commission plan and let's copy it. <clears throat> What's happened over time is that you now, what uh, takes off sales operations, sales operations, used to be more predominantly more administrative type of work. Like, hey, we need help um, administering Salesforce or managing Salesforce or be compliant with Salesforce. You're now seeing a, a, a more popular type of function uh, or, how, or view on how to think about sales operations, which is more strategic. And I think as that has continued to rise, companies are thinking, look, we are leaving money on the table by not emphasizing certain parts of um, the business in these commission plans and trying to solve for them. And so you're right, contracts are more complex because from a CFO standpoint, there is money left on the table, but that means nothing if you can't drive the right incentives to hit on these objectives. So for example, how do you think about multi-years or cash up front if you're in a SaaS business? Or if you're in staffing, how do you think about margin and making sure that you're, you know, when you're pricing these contracts with different companies, you're doing it profitably? Or where are you going to give and take around these profit margins? So for what we're seeing is the variability between uh, companies is increasing. Uh, even though the commission plan itself can be similar in structure, you're seeing companies like take maybe a foundation and then they go in a different direction with them. You're also seeing um, in the last couple of years, in my view, I think you're seeing more different types of business models um, be introduced. You know, one of the ones that people are talking about more is usage-based models. And how do you think about usage-based models and commission plans around them? That's probably the industry that I personally have seen um, a lack of consistency around of commission plans, just because everyone is solving for something really different when it comes to usage base and everyone's usage based models have their own different type of behavior. Some of them have a slower ramp. Uh, some of them are, you know, it just goes crazy right from the beginning. But then when do you like capture the right amount of credit that you want to apply to a, a rep? So these are things where really the company is going to have to ask themselves, how do we think about our unit economics and what we're willing to trade off for acquiring and incentivizing around these types of behaviors? And what do you find from the ultimate salesperson's perspective? Do you, your, your user is somebody in sales operations, right? That's right. Do salespeople ever see the algorithms that go into your tools? Do they ask to see them? I mean, what, what transparency are you providing to the ultimate person who either gets annoyed with this stuff or delighted yeah. with, the, with the check? Absolutely. So. One thing for us and our cultural value is that level of transparency. So, and I say that because internally for our company, um, it's one of the key tenets that we operate by. And we want that to permeate with our product too, or down to our product level. And within our product, sales reps can log in and see all the detail around how they're getting paid. Uh, it is requiring the admin to set it up and to go to what extent of how they want to show all the, um, uh, you know, the views, but uh, there's nothing preventing the admin from exposing all the nuances of the, the payment. And what I mean by that is you can show a data table that says, here is this deal. You, you know, here are all the different rates that were getting applied. Here's your accelerators. And also more importantly, here is... Uh, your payment uh, in the different tiers of accelerators. So you might get 50, you know, especially if you're crossing a line between the different attainment tiers, you got 50 bucks uh, closing captive IQ in tier one. Uh, and then because you're in that inflection point, you got another 25 bucks in tier two. So you can see 
every nuance with it. Um, I think what we try to do with our customers is a lot of it is going back to education and making sure that you're providing a good experience with your customers on what, and by customers, I mean like the end sales reps, what do they want to see? What are they trying to get out of it? Uh, what gets them to not spend too much time thinking about this, but more getting the insights that are impactful into their day. So we do kind of help educate how to put together a really effective statement structure. And then you can also use that statement structure to provide more off the shelf reporting around how you're closing deals. So I think where the world used to be, hey, you got 50 bucks for commissions and like, here's like two deals that you close for that. You can actually show pie charts, views, uh, you know, in a given month, how did your accelerators continue to like grow or not accelerators, your attainment grow as a, over time? Did you do it like a hockey stick and it all hit in the last couple of days? These are really cool views for you to get more insights about your behavior and how you are closing deals. So one of the things that we get pretty excited by is we think that kind of nuance to our product actually opens doors to making it more of a coaching tool uh, when done correctly. Because you now have a good way to, for your managers to look into your performance and say, look, let's see how you did. Okay, great. You know, here's how many you did in multi-years. You know, you might be leaving some on the table if, or some money on the table if you could really push multi-years in this front for these key deals. Oh, by the way, I noticed that, you know, verticalization wise, you have a lot more concentration in here. You know, are you having issues in these other areas that you haven't closed as much pipeline or deals in? So it does surface a lot of questions that can help inform better management between the seller and the, the manager. Excellent. Um, where do you, I mean, the, I met you at a World Day Ventures uh, uh, setting. Do you, do you associate more with the HR side of the house or more the sales side of the house? Great question. Um, in the mid-market, um, I believe it's more in the sales side. In the enterprise, it's actually a blend between both. Um, okay. And I say that because in the mid-market, it becomes much more emphasis around you know, closing deals, deal strategy, or sales strategy, et cetera. When you get into enterprise, a lot of the conversation shifts to automating work, uh, workflow and employee lifecycle journeys. If you imagine your, let's use an example, um, you have 800,000 payees, which is, there are companies out there that exist that have 800 to a million plus people in the system that they have to manage. Not our system, but just like give me an example of one. That's impossible to do with a person. That becomes much more of an HR responsibility because you need a good system structure on your HRS to create these automated workflows that feed into the system and help you identify here are all the people that are changing teams or are leaving the company. And by the way, here's another set of people that are coming in and here's how they should be assigned to the different regions or different commission plans, et cetera. So, um, I think there is a, a undoubtedly a massive HR automation aspect to this, uh, and hence why I, I believe uh, you know Workday's thesis around this, especially as they think about what they do and where they're going, is to round out their uh, product gaps in areas that complement um, uh, the direction that they're going on HRS, especially continue to better serve their enterprise clients. So what were they trying to optimize? Why was it so complex? Why was a company- In the beginning for at Bright Roll? Yeah. When you work at, so let me describe it this way. When you work at a, uh, a growing tech company, there's a couple of things that are common. Um, one, your data structure is just, it's ever changing. So you probably heard this phrase, data never comes in the form that you need it in. That is, could not be truer for any growing company. And to kind of emphasize that point, let's pretend that we had 10 companies, growth companies in front of us and they're all using Salesforce. I guarantee you they're all using Salesforce differently. Different fields, different custom objects, all that stuff. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that data, you know, Salesforce is good about capturing CRM related information. 
it was not built for purpose for commissions, right? Any transactions, frankly, you know, it's not a, it's no exactly. process orders. <laughs> it doesn't, exactly. It doesn't so, have much revenue, revenue, right? Exactly. And it, it makes sense, right? Like Salesforce wasn't saying, hey, you got to think about commissions. That's an afterthought. So things like splitting deals, and this is like one of the silliest things, like let's say you and I close Captive IQ together. How would Salesforce know that? That like, like it doesn't, it's not made for multiple sellers and then splitting credit that it was all one opportunity owner to be assigned to it. So things like that, you had to manually split or um, there's things like currency adjustments. There's, you know, a million other nuances that aren't effectively captured. So that's part of it. The other part too, is just, geez, like the stuff is not built for spreadsheets. You know, if you have certain commission plans, like a, a one that's paid on, uh, cash receipts or invoices that requires a different data set, like I mentioned the ERP case, you're now having to bring in this different data set. And then you now have another problem. I have to make sure that data set's good because a different team put that data set together and there's definitely errors, issues that need to be trued up. And then I finally combine it and then I can build this model. The model is the easiest part at the end of the day, at least for the most part. Um, there are definitely commission plans like hold, or hold, uh, hold and release plans that Excel really sucks at. Um, but the setting out the statements, this is classic, like Excel wasn't built for setting out statements. So what I had to do is create a tab and you have you know, 50, 100, 200 people to send these out. Well, how's it gonna get out of this spreadsheet? You have to manually hard code this stuff and send it out, right? So that's where software is built better for that. But I think where people forget is that this is all just basic automation. Software, when you do it correctly, level two is, okay, now we've automated these workflows. How do we become more strategic? How do we think about you know, changing these variables if we wanna fine tune the commission plan or if we wanna increase quotas or increase OTEs? How does it infect our, our unit economics? And man, you can, all these spreadsheets, um, which is how, you know, commissions, you might have like one spreadsheet for every month or period. If you have, like, that's not easy to pull analysis together. Whereas you have one system, you now can standardize and start to run cool analytics around this stuff. What are our unit economics on these deals? Are we paying out 50% in total if we aggregate sales engineers, BDRs, leadership? Those are some interesting questions. Mark, this is great. Um, you're obviously doing extremely well. So there's a clear pain point out there you're solving. So thank you for the quick update. Of course, thank you for having me on, V.